Hello and welcome to tonight's um, Lacuna Festival's event. Um, today, tonight, this afternoon, this morning, wherever you are <laughs> in the world, um, we yeah. have got a live art workshop um, that's being led by Amber and Marva here. So I'm going to pass over straight to you two. Um, have a really great time. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Go ahead, Marwa. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, my name is Marwa uh, from Egypt. I'm a emerging artist. Uh, I, my practice is painting and mural painting. I graduated from a mural painting department actually. Uh, I have uh, influenced by uh, the old uh, art movements, I just uh, draw by serial, uh, serialism and cubism, cubism and abstract uh, movements. Uh, I have a huge admiration for Kandinsky's composition. Uh, today, uh, we will uh, have a workshop uh, about, uh, it's called online painting and drawing. Uh, it's a popular uh, idea uh, happened in the Western uh, world in the past. Uh, that uh, the, the, the artists uh, uh, together in the cafe to, uh, to, uh, draw sketches and criticize the, uh, the, the others drawing and uh, discuss the techniques uh, of each other. Uh, our subject is about draw your feelings. We uh, choose this because we thought that uh, uh, the art is got infinity better if it's driven by uh, em by deepening emotions uh, that's it yeah <laughs> yeah and I'm Amber I do oil paintings uh, it's mostly portraiture and figurative work um, and like Marwa said the idea today is just to use like color line scale um, subject matter you know if you want to work in black and white and color whatever you feel like doing um, and just express yourself with a painting or express something about someone else with your painting as well or drawing or crayon or whatever you have is fine um, so yeah let's go so I'm gonna switch to this view right here. And I'm just gonna be drawing and then painting and uh, probably don't really have a whole lot to talk about awesome. in terms of what I'm doing here, but uh, yeah. So is the idea that we're all working at the same time together, like in the art cafes? Yes. Yeah, is yeah, just... Yeah, just clear your mind and draw, drop your feelings on the paper. Do what you want. We don't know, we don't want as a piece of art. Just do what you want. That's what you feel right now. Drop on the paper. That's it. By any medium uh, you want, you choose. That's no it. pressure. Uh, yeah. Okay. And everybody is going to be doing something different. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it'll be really fun. Um, I always, obviously, portraits are like the easiest to ex be expressive with because faces are so expressive. But, you know, you can even do a drawing of a hand. Hands can be expressive. Eyes can be expressive. Flowers can be expressive. Abstract shapes can be expressive. So, yeah, I love abstract. Give me that. The season to do what I yeah. Mm -hmm. So Sometimes our interpretation of a portrait can be a little bit wider than just a face, then. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, a hand, like I consider a portrait of a person, even if you're painting just their hands, mm -hmm. the expression of their hands can be a portrait of that person, even if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, I'm excited to get going. <laughs> Right. What are you guys going to do? What medium are you guys going to do? Gonna I think what I'm going to start with some watercolour or maybe some ink or some dye of some form and then do some yeah. line on the top. Cool. I think. I like that idea. Yeah. What are you going to do, Sam? 
And I, I am think, doing a lot of I think I'm going to start with some kind of sort of charcoal. Okay. Oh, nice. Or graphite. <laughs> we have a graphite stick. Yeah, you'll have to go to the studio and get one, though. It's in the store. Actually, I started doing art with uh, with charcoal in school. Oh. Yeah. One of the when I used mediums, to use right? charcoal at school, I had to wrap it with like a bit of paper because I wasn't really into how it felt. I was a little bit funny about it. I'm still a little bit funny about it. I still quite often wrap like a bit of paper around it to use it. That makes a lot of sense because like the sensation of it on the paper can be kind of weird sometimes depending on which kind of charcoal. Yeah. It can be a little bit like um, uh, the sensation of chalk on a blackboard or yeah, it's making me feel a bit funny just thinking about it actually. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. You can't go away. You have to do it here. We're doing it like in the art cafe. Yeah, come back wherever you went. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 8 p.m. where you guys are. It's 11 or 12 p.m. where I am right now. Uh, it's 9 p.m. here. 9 and 15. 9 p.m. <laughs> Eight, nine, and twelve. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like painting at midnight, Amber? Oh, 12, uh, 12 noon, actually. Ah, oh, 12 yeah. noon. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, right sure. around where I usually start getting started, yeah, so it's kind of great. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just grab my watercolors from in there, please? Thank you. Are you there because you're ordering me? <sighs> oh, pressure. Pressure's on. <laughs> Do you have any advice for people if they don't have somebody to draw from and they wanted to do a portrait of somebody? What could they do? Well, you can always go online um, and use a portrait from the internet or you can use a mirror. Oh, yeah, I use a mirror. I always use a mirror in in school, uh, in college. Yeah, like Van Gogh did. <laughs> and even if they don't want to do that, they can do a portrait of themselves, of their emotions, mm -hmm. without having it be a face. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I might do that. You can do it a little more abstract, like what Marwa does with her designs. There, it's not a face necessarily, but it's still a portrait of you know, her feeling. It's funny, I used to think watercolor was so stressful and unforgiving, yeah, and I have right. found that it's the opposite, really. Ditto, that's really funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to totally avoid it. Mm -hmm. I was afraid of it, and then I took some classes, and it's like, it can actually be super fun. <laughs> yeah. I don't really know how I, I didn't take class, I just kind of started using it, and was like, Oh, I can kind of, I think I thought that I had to use it in a certain way because a lot of the watercolor pieces that I had seen looked a certain way, you know? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. And then I kind of started playing when I had a bit more confidence. I was like, oh, actually, it's not really like that at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, you can do whatever you want with it, really. Yeah. There are some really beautiful styles out there, though. Some of the more yeah. traditional styles are so gorgeous. I can't paint like that, though. <laughs> <laughs> but do you only work in watercolor? Or do you work in lots of different colors? Different colors? <laughs> different materials? Yes. I mostly mm -hmm. use uh, just... oil paint myself. Yeah. No, I love gouache and watercolor. I loved all the kind of watercolors, gouache. Yeah. And and pencils, yeah, the ink pen. That's it. I hate oil paintings. <laughs> <laughs> that's understandable. How did you end up using oil paints as your main medium, Amber? 
Um, I chose it in school. We basically had the option of choosing drawing, painting, drawing and painting together, basically, or printmaking or sculpture. Mm -hmm. um, and so I went with drawing and painting because printmaking is great, but lithography was miserable. <laughs> uh, so I decided to do oil painting. Um, we had the choice of acrylic or oil, but I was obsessed with the old masters when I started in school. And so I chose oil so that I could kind of emulate that. Um, I think it's a lot more versatile in my experience and a little easier to use than acrylics uh, once you get used to it. Personally. Um, I feel like acrylics, whenever I tried using them, always dried on me a little too quickly because I like to keep, keep changing things and moving things around. And I always like smear paint, paint together. Um, so oils work a little bit better for like my style. What made you choose murals, Marwa? Murals, I love the techniques of the, uh, of the mosaics and the stained glasses. It's a fascinating to me actually. Nice. Uh, yeah, that's well, I know. They offered a mural painting class at my school, but uh, I wasn't able to take it because of COVID. And then I graduated right after COVID started. <laughs> oh, for real? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So we don't get to have a graduation, which is unfortunate, but at least, you know, everyone's okay. I don't have any, <laughs> anybody in the family that's sick or anything. So I'm grateful for that. Yeah. I'm sure having the gallery must have been really hard with, with the pandemic and everything and making everything virtual and trying to keep it going. Right. Yeah, this year wasn't so bad. Last year was super stressful because we kind of left it. It was like last year, I think that people didn't really believe that it was gonna happen. And I think that we didn't really believe that we were gonna be locked down for such a long time, that it was gonna impact the festival. You know, when everybody locked down in March, we were like, yeah, but the festival's not till July. I mean, it's months away, you know? <laughs> and yeah. so we didn't make a decision until quite late on that we were going to A, go ahead, and B, that it was going to have to be virtual. So we had an awful lot of learning to do in a very short space of time because neither of us have done any sort of online curation stuff before. So we had to like test out loads of platforms and then learn how to use them and then figure out because for me curating is a really physical process like I like to be able to move the artworks around and put them next to other artworks and kind of see them having conversations with each other and you just can't do that in a virtual gallery so it was like a whole a huge steep learning curve last year so this year yeah. felt a little bit more comfortable actually because we kind of <laughs> had an idea at least about what we were doing. Oh, I love Well I'm grateful that you guys ended up being virtual because this wouldn't be happening otherwise. <laughs> yeah well I think that going forwards we're gonna we're gonna keep the some of the events anyway at least as being um digital because we've had so much really really good feedback from people um who have been yeah. to events and and been engaging on youtube saying that you know they're so grateful that and it's made them feel kind of more a part of the festival because if you can't come here to kind of be in the physical um presence of other artists then I guess it might kind of not feel like a real thing. You know, you send your artwork somewhere to be displayed and then, you know, if you don't go, then how do you make it a kind of real experience? So yeah. I think that um, we're definitely going to keep some, yeah, some virtual <laughs> events next year and we're definitely going to keep the YouTube channel and things like that. Cool. Yeah. Keep going so, what you do. Because I'm really fascinated about both of you, just both of you without enough money, enough materials, just did an international festival. I like that. <laughs> yeah, it is a little bit crazy and it does still seem a bit no. crazy. <laughs>
yeah, still it still seems it seems crazier that the festivals got bigger and kind of our budget hasn't, but we don't have a budget. Well, we don't have a budget. <laughs> yeah, it just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I guess I've always said I've been a creative facilitator for a really long time now. For like ten years, I've been freelance, working wow. with a lot of um, kind of marginalised or um, vulnerable groups in society um, in participation projects um, and co-creating artwork together. Um, and I've always said in those facilitation sessions like you can do anything you just have to you just have to do it you just have to think it and believe it and kind of go for it and then just really really work yeah. you know and then yeah, yeah. I guess this is kind of living that a little bit you know it's yeah put mm. your money where your mouth is <laughs> <laughs> was it kind of a leap of faith deciding to continue to do the festival despite the pandemic then yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was a it was a leap of faith to to do the festivals in the first place. <laughs> because we've like we've only been on Lanzarote for for just over three years, coming up three to four years. years. Um, and like we kind of we got rid of all our no, just three years, not just yeah, yeah got rid of all our kind of possessions I guess back in the UK um, and just said right well we'll move to Lanzarote and so we, we yes. came out here with literally nothing um, wow. Wow. the money that we did have we kind of we invested in a in a vehicle to, to get us around the place and we did a project called work away for just over a year um, mm -hmm. which is where you exchange 20 hours work a week in exchange for food and accommodation. Oh, interesting. And wow. so that kind of gave us a, gave us a way to explore the island and kind of figure out where we wanted to be and what we, what we wanted to kind of do. But our, our long-term goal has always been to, to set up residential art studios somehow. Um, and the festival just, just came about kind of by chance Sarah Sarah has a, a friend who lives in a little village in France um, mm. and he's run a he's run a grassroots arts festival for kind of 10 years 15 years 10 years, 10 years. yeah and um, and in a in a discussion just like it just popped out and Ken said to Sarah well I live in La Rock and we have the La Rock Arts Festival and you live in Lanzarote. So the acronym's the same, Lanzarote Arts Festival, La Rock Arts Festival. Let's let's run a festival together. Let's that's twin. Together. Oh, that's so cool. Wow. Wow. Oh. And that's, that was literally how it was. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That was it. So we just kind of put an open call out and uh, didn't really expect much, to be honest. Well, we didn't expect that a lot. That's yeah. The, first. <laughs> yeah. the first year was a total surprise. Yeah, the, the first year we got, like, we kind of expected maybe 20 or 30 artists, you know, kind of people that we know we thought might apply. Um, and the, the applications just kept on coming. That's awesome. Wow. And it was, it was awesome because we had, like, there was artists from all over the world, like, came to the island to be a part of the festival. I wish we could have done yeah. that this year. That would have been amazing. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, there's next, next year. year. <laughs> there's all the years on the year, you know? <laughs> yeah. Definitely. But it, it was so nice. Like, we, we had, where did it come from? Iceland? Iceland, Spain, Germany, the UK, America, Canada. Italy, can't think, I all remember. over the place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the people who actually came in person were just, yeah, it was amazing. But yeah, from all of these different countries um, and yeah, it's kind of, it's totally different online. But actually, 
sometimes it's it's different in a good way you know because this kind of one-on-one -on -one conversation well I mean it's two on two but you know it's pretty close <laughs> like this <laughs> didn't really happen in the first year that much because there were always a big group of artists together because people had traveled you know from Canada you know that's that's so we could get over that that's such a long trip and so yeah you know and so he was involved in everything he was always there and that's great but it just means that it was a totally different kind of energy to now you know like now we're getting these little pockets of kind of really intense interaction with artists um which is kind of really lovely in a different way you know mm -hmm. yeah, well, it gives me the opportunity mm -hmm. definitely giving us the uh the kind of impetus to to carry on and to, to drive the festival forward and to to keep pushing to expand it. Yeah, definitely. Have, do you expect to have like a big in-person presence um, maybe next year? Yeah, hopefully, because we, I mean, we had we had a lot of artists who who participated in the first and the second festival um, who had already expressed an interest in coming to the island for this year's festival before we had to before we had to kind of postpone it physically. Mm -hmm. So I think I think I think next year is going to be quite interesting. I think it will be interesting. I think it could be um, it could either be like totally epic or everyone could expect it to be epic. And then <laughs> COVID will still be around. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Like mm -hmm. there is still that kind of in the back of my mind. So of last year, um, yeah. Ari from Tinani Nani organized a group, a working group of about 20 artists um, from yes. about 15 or 16 different countries. And together they made an artwork specifically for the festival um, and they'd never met before. They just collaborated from afar and made this amazing piece um, called Dreams of a Working Class Hero. It's actually still on our YouTube if you want to see it. Um, but they, they had never met each other. And so their plan was always that this year they were going to come and whoever was able was going to kind of meet <laughs> up. And then obviously um. that didn't really happen. Um, and we'd had um, conversations with Tanani Nani about them coming and um, doing a little mini tour between here and Puerto Ventura. Um, and that was, we kind of pushed that back a little bit. We were going to do it the first week of August. The festivals were going to close and then their tour was going to be the first week of August. And we've had to cancel that because COVID is still kind of posing a problem in terms of um, audience and, yeah, people traveling and, yeah, mainly audience yeah. actually and kind yeah. of accessing spaces to perform in. Um, so hopefully like all of these things um, and all of these things, you know, where it's like people have had conversations and made friends or worked together and collaborated this year, there's all of last year's and all of this year's. So if we can actually get together next year, then that would be amazing, you know, and hopefully mm -hmm. there'll be lots of people who'd be interested in coming yeah definitely yeah to meet marwa in person <laughs> what? Yeah. and that that's kind of that's kind of one of the great things is that that each festival were like we're expanding kind of a community of artists that are, are getting yeah. together and like sarah said you know we had the the group that, that got together to perform oh, the piece and they're all still in touch. Um, we had we had a, an event earlier on in this festival with three artists from, um, where were they from? Canada? I don't know which England, project you're talking about. Uh, the Aha Collective. The Aha Collective. Canada, England. Oh, they're both English, but one is Northern England and one's Southern uh, England. And they... Okay. And, and so they they were kind of the same as you guys. They they got in touch and they started working together, but they'd never actually met. Um, they were put together. In, they were, they were, yeah, they were put together in a different festival, weren't they? A different virtual residency. So it was 
actually a residency that normally takes place obviously in person in Brazil and these mm -hmm. people had applied obviously they would not necessarily go to a residency in Brazil normally but because it was virtual they applied and were accepted they were split into small groups in the residency and they formed a, a working collective who made a piece that was submitted to the festival um, and then they gave a really good actually live talk about using different technologies well using common technologies in different ways as a kind of part of the creative process um, so it's kind of amazing that that's the if there, if there's a silver lining to a pandemic maybe that's it you know that kind of that's the benefit side of the pandemic to to meet each other on the internet and know the strange people we cannot meet in the real life yeah we know. yeah an international community uh, if you will. yeah yeah i love that <laughs> How have you found the pandemic has affected your art practice? Really? Uh, actually, it's not affected my art practice because I kind of uh, didn't uh, participate in the, any, any galleries uh, in the past because you must transport your uh, painting. It costs too much. Yeah. So it was a chance to me to take this advantage when pandemic came and uh, they opened the online uh, exhibitions. I started to send my artworks to them and participated in a lot of uh, exhibition that two uh, last in that in that last year. Yeah. Six or seven, actually, I guess. Oh, wow. So from, wow. from nothing yeah. to six or seven, that's quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's impressive. Yes, yeah, I opportunity. Really, yeah, I feel the same. I like I wouldn't have applied to this festival if it was in person only, because like she said, transporting or, you know, shipping your art internationally is not only terrifying because you don't want it to get lost or damaged, but also so expensive, so expensive. So uh, having the opportunity to do a virtual exhibition and not have to stress about, you know, how you're going to get your piece to the show has been fantastic. Do you have any ideas about how, because it's a, the, the shipping of artwork is a, is a huge issue. The shipping of artwork to Lanzarote is a really huge issue because technically yeah. we're in the EU because we are Spanish territory, but we're actually only a hundred kilometers off the coast of Africa. And so oh, wow. for stuff to get here, there's a very long winded process. It has to go through at least two sorting centers before it even arrives yeah. on the island. Um, within uh, Europe, it goes through two sorting centres in Madrid and then in Gran Canaria before it gets here. Um, plus, there's kind of issues with tax, and it's all it's all quite complicated. And it's something that a lot of contemporary artists um, who are from the Canary Islands are currently petitioning the government about because it it means that it's really restrictive for them because they can't really ship their work out to the mainland to have it exhibited because it's just too costly. So yeah. do you have any ideas for how, like, workarounds, you know? I don't know what. No, I don't know. I have any idea. I... No, you have any yeah. idea, Amber? I, I, I didn't do it before, so I didn't know anything. Um, yeah, I don't, like, I guess just if there was a specific company or something that specialized in shipping the artwork so that you know you can at least just have one source that isn't as expensive as like USPS or um, DHL or something like that because um, I know I don't know if there is out there but here there's um, companies that specifically specialize in shipping art and creating it and delivering it and they even do installation um, but I don't know if that's something that would really work out there. 
Yeah. yeah, it's not something that that there is here. We don't really have. Well, there is. There's one kind of main shipping company, um, I guess, that work on behalf of other companies. So if people ship with like UPS or DPD or TNT or any of these companies, they all come through one company this end. Um, we don't have, you know, TNT depots here. We don't have like that kind of range of things. It's either you go to the post office or, or you use this one firm. Um, right. So, so I have a monopoly on it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay. And like I say, it's all the legalities of it are quite complex. Um, and I did, the, the year that we were physical, I spent a lot of time kind of reading up about it. But that was two years ago, you know, there's been a global pandemic since then, so I've forgotten a lot mm -hmm. about what I learned. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. How do you think artists would respond if we kind of, I don't know, I'm just, I'm literally thinking just kind of off the cuff just because we're talking about it. Like if we said, okay, well, we're going to do a physical festival and you have to send in an artwork that's on paper so that you can roll it up and send it in a tube or post it in an envelope and it's cheaper or yeah. that's a certain size. Do you think that people would go for that or do you think that people would find that too restrictive? No, I would think say... it, uh, depends on the situation. Depends on their situation, if they can pay the money or not. They're not, not all the people can pay, so True. I don't know about shipping the money, about shipping the, the painting through, uh, through posting or, or posting the, the painting. Yeah. That was something yeah. that we considered, wasn't it, was having a, like kind of having a size restriction on artworks, because one, one of the the big expenses here is if it's more than a meter long, then for some reason, like even just a centimeter over, then the the cost of shipping just goes Sky through rocket. the roof. Mm. Yeah. And the and the yeah. standard the standard postal service won't accept it. You have to then use a courier. So that was something that we considered, kind of as well as having a theme kind of restricting the restricting the the scale of, of pieces because the first year we had some absolutely enormous pieces we did and in fact one of them was only just collected like literally at the start of this festival somebody came to collect a piece that we've been storing for two years <laughs> and it was yeah. like it was three and a half meters tall it was That's absurd <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah i have seen galleries have specific size limits and also you sign something that you're gonna come and pick it up at the end of it or they can sell it yeah yeah, yeah. we did well, include there's, there's that a... but we're not that mean <laughs> yeah that's fair i totally get that <laughs> Like, don't make me, come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was yeah. like, well, whilst we have the room, you know, we'll, we'll keep hold of it whilst we've got the room. Maybe they'll get back in touch and the artwork will be collected. And then lo and behold, it was. So that was good. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that, yeah, that is the only downside, you know, not to disparage artists, but we can be a little flaky. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would. I would say though, if you did have like a meter, that's huge to me. Um, obviously, there are lots of massive artworks in gal in you know museums and galleries that are even bigger than that. But um, I have seen a lot of galleries that have specific size limits, also just because they don't have the wall space and they want to be able to have a specific number of pieces. So they'll yeah. say you know no larger than like you know thirty six inches in width or something like that. But that's all I could think of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of our festival artists has just um, been accepted at a printmaking um, festival. I can't think where it is, but that's got a size limit that's really dinky. I think it's 10 centimeters squared. 
Wow. Which is wow. really dinky. Yeah, yeah. That's right. tiny. Yeah. I guess that makes sense for printmaking because okay. like a lot of prints are really small anyways, just because it's hard to yeah. do like a huge plate. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But that's, that is really small. Yeah. <laughs> but it's cute. It sounds cute. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the nice things that we've had this year is the, the postcard exhibition. I don't know if, oh, yeah, you, that's cute. if you've seen that. Um, and so we, we've got, we got one physical exhibition space that um, they kind of surprised us at the last minute. We'd applied for it two years ago because every, everywhere was booked when we applied for, for last year's festival. Um, and so they gave us a call like about three weeks, four weeks before the festival launched and said, do you still want this exhibition space? And I'm like, uh, we don't have any <laughs> coming to the island yet. So that that was one of the reasons why we, we went with the the postcard suggestion that, that some of the artists had come up with. And it's been like it's been so successful and there's been so many yeah. different artists and the, the range of the postcards that people have made and sent in. It's been really nice. And then to, to see kind of a lot of small pieces in a gallery is I think I think that's yeah. that's kind of something special, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I would keep that up in like a little small space in the in the gallery, like oh and commemorate, you know, 2021 and 2020. And uh, okay. Yeah. This cute little event we did. Well, unfortunately, yeah. the postcards are going to the artists, so Oh. <laughs> yeah. So people um, who wanted to could pay to have a postcard sent back to them, and we're going to send them a different artist postcard. So you get like to take part in the exhibition, and then you get a little artwork back. Oh right, right, right. Okay, well, that makes sense. That makes sense too. <laughs> yeah. But, but you could do it again in the future. Scans them. So we're going to make a little book as kind of like a legacy thing for this year. Oh, there you go. It, it yeah, does feel amazing. kind of special this year. It's a bit of a, a weird one, like last one, last year was too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that idea a lot. That sounds really great. God, I'm enjoying watching you work so much. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't speak too much when I when I drove. <laughs> no, it's okay. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> It's just fascinating watching like all of the different approaches, you know. Mm. I can zoom in on what I'm doing really quick if you're interested. Oh yeah, please do. Yeah. Oh, my color is not coming through at all. It's a lot more saturated mm -hmm. than that. But... <laughs> That's awesome. They're both awesome. Oh wow. Yeah. So different. I can... Shall we? Do you yeah. want to see ours? I'm, yeah. I don't know what you can see. Hold on, let me put the camera back on. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, I have a digital background to contend with. Hold on. Because if I hold we it- We can like, just edit this part out. Nothing. <laughs> nothing, it's like, there's nothing there. But I can, I can get rid of that for the minute. Um, and then you'll be able to see. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Oh wow, I love the colors. It's uh, awesome. Uh, yeah. That's, that's my one. Do you want to show yours so far? Mine's, mine's definitely a work in progress. I think that's actually the same. Oh nice. Yeah, yeah it's... <laughs> <laughs> Got the blue hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my hair's always a different color. Yeah. Did you particularly like it blue? Is that why you're drawing blue? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the photograph I've, I've taken it from has got kind of nice memories. Ah, oh, that's cool. cute. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's really wet, so I'm going to have to wait for it now, which is really annoying. You can draw on mine again. And I should have waited there looks I started pulling the paper up because I'm too impatient. This is why I could never be an oil painter. I tried, 
I think the colors in oil paints are absolutely outstanding, but I'm ju I just don't have the patience. I need to be able to paint like now. So <laughs> yeah, so <the laughs> acrylic is the way forward. That is understandable. I, I can't commit most of the time, so that's why I like oils because I can just like wipe it off. <laughs> <laughs> But I do use some mediums in oil um, that dry like super fast, um, obviously not as fast as acrylic ever, but um, mm -hmm. there are mediums like, um, ga there's a Gamsol product um, that's like a gel medium and it's solvent free. Uh, I think it's literally called solvent free gel medium, um, but it'll dry paint if there's enough of it in there within 24 hours, if it's not too thick. Okay. Yeah. And do you so find that it helpful. affects the quality of the, like, the color, the clarity of the color, or is it okay? No, no it's been pretty great, actually. Um, I use it in all of my paintings. It's also just a great medium, even regardless of, like, the drying time issue. Uh, it's just a great medium in general that I really like. I'm going to mute myself really quick because I'm going to use a blow dryer. <laughs> I, don't, like I, said, I don't have that patience. <laughs> and now we have this really surreal video of somebody hair drying with no sound. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's good, doesn't it, to have to wait for stuff to dry? Because, like, I'm really thinking about what it I'm wanting. You. It is for me, yeah, because I can be a little bit too impulsive. Like, I'm really thinking about what um, Ma while was saying about the emotions and, you know, how I'm feeling right now and kind of what, what the content is, I guess. Because mm -hmm. the subject is obviously, like, a portrait, but, but what's the content of that? Mm -hmm. What's your intention? Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I'm, I'm in this kind of really lovely place at the minute where um, I, I got awarded an Arts Council grant and so I'm spending loads oh. more time on my personal practice than I have done for a very long time. I've been concentrating on facilitation for, yeah, for years and so now to have this kind of luxury of really concentrating on my own work without that distraction is and I'm finding it just amazing and so I'm thinking about stuff so much deeper in the same way that I used to think about the kind of projects that I would run with other people now I'm thinking about my own work like that you know kind of really it's so exciting. yeah and it's kind of revealing all of this stuff you know? yeah congratulations by the way that's amazing <laughs> thank you yeah I'm pretty chuffed actually pretty chuffed I love that term. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a term that's used a lot, Amber, where you are? No, actually, um, but I do have, uh, I teach one student and their parents are both from Ireland. And so I hear phrases like that occasionally. I'm like, that's a really cute phrase. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> And then I adopt them for like a week. <laughs> <laughs> you love you love teaching Amber because teaching is amazing. I like teaching some people. <laughs> <laughs> I won't lie. I'm kind of picky about who I like to teach. Um, I like to teach people who are taking it seriously. And my student is only ten years old, and she is blowing yeah. me away. Actually, um, she like is genuinely invested in learning it. Um, so in that, in this particular situation, yes. I don't teach anybody else though. I just have one student. What about you? I love, I'm already working as a art teacher for kids. It's amazing. So cool. yeah. 
Do you enjoy it, Mala? Yeah, yeah, I enjoy it. Part of them are very talented and they already practice uh, on them on, by themselves uh, where they watch the YouTube videos and they came to me and have the sketches. You all tell me that's right or not. I, I love this. Yeah. Awesome. It's really cool seeing them develop as artists and like seeing that light bulb moment when something just clicks and they suddenly understand what they're doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then they can start doing it again and they get that confidence. I love that. Yeah, I love teaching. This is kind of where, I, why I suppose I got a bit carried away with, with doing so much facilitation because I just love it. I really, really love teaching. I love education. I love learning. I particularly like creative education. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, it's almost like addictive for me. I think it kind yeah. of gives me like an energy, you know? Yeah. I wish, I wish creative education was more uh, popular in the US. Um, we have to like fight for any classes to stay, like art classes in, in schools, they try to get rid of left and right, especially um, in some states. And so it's a little bit tragic because you see these art departments that are just shriveling away, uh, you know. That's definitely and so the, just in the US. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, I heard about the UK. <laughs> I heard yeah. about what was happening in the UK with that as well, which is just tragic. Like, if, to me, art is like, like it's the first way humans ever communicated before we had a written language. You know, it's it's the yeah. purest form of expression for people. And I have found that learning history through art has been a lot more interesting also rather than just learning it through books. And so if we don't have art that explains our part of history, like that's that's kind of sad. It's amazing. There's a little bit of a, a kind of resistance movement. Is that too strong a term? No, it's not, no. is it? <laughs> <laughs> a, a kind of against the shrinking of creative education in the UK. And there's quite a lot of passion behind that. Um, there's a lot of, of, kind of lobbying and a lot of political art pieces being made and um, yeah. yeah so that's and that's kind of exciting uh, but sometimes it can be a little bit exhausting as well because you you kind of want to get involved and you're really passionate about it and then it feels a bit like you're kind of just banging your head against a brick wall you know you're kind of not getting anywhere very fast for the amount of energy that people are putting in it yeah it feels a little bit frustrating in my experience. Yeah, there was, I, I kind of understand what you mean um, with the, you know, the BLM movement here in the States uh, is kind of the same thing where, you know, they were making all these laws that were kind of to appease people, but there wasn't any real progress made. And that's kind of frustrating because, you know, there were specific things that people wanted to happen that would have been a lot more progressive and a lot more productive in terms of like, you know, making society better for everyone. And um, a lot of those things just never, never came about after the election. <laughs> Not to get political though. <laughs> do you think they will? Or do you think it's just kind of... I like to hope so. Because um, otherwise, what's the point, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, it, I hope so. I mean, it, there's definitely been progress, at least. So yeah, you know, we're better off than we were. Picked up such huge momentum, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I saw art coming out of it left and right, and it was yeah. great seeing that. So yeah, there's hoping that you know we can all be better, right? Yeah. yeah. And eyes are really hard to do in watercolor. <laughs> really? 
I have the way that you say that. I mean, <laughs> charming. I think I'm over that. I'll upload a picture of this uh, for you guys if you'd like. Um, yeah. So you can actually see the color through because yeah. it's not really coming through in this video at all. <laughs> that would be really cool, actually. Yeah. I can email it to you. Uh, should I just email it to that link, uh, to the email that you sent the mm -hmm. Zoom link through? Yeah. It's that just our usual one, the Lacuna Festivals at, uh, not the, no, the. The email yeah. is lacunafestival at gmail.com. Okay, cool, cool, cool. How long have you been working with watercolor? Uh, well. I don't know, like maybe 2017 was the first time I really seriously did it because then, no, 2016. So that's now how many years? Oh my gosh, that's five years. Five years wow. I've kind of been sure. so old, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I did this so I met an artist I, I try and go obviously not the past year because of the pandemic but I tried to go to um an artist's residence in Cyprus called the Cyprus College of Art it's not actually a college anymore it used to be but now artists from around the world can go you can stop for however long you want from two weeks up to a year and you wow. have um, studio space that you have access to 24 hours and a bedroom of your own and then kind of shared communal living space. Um, wow. and it's just awesome. And I go every year just to kind of reinvigorate my practice. And I met an artist there who asked me if I'd ever tried painting at night. And I was like, well, what do you mean? Like if I'm painting something and I want to carry on, then I'll just carry on. And they were like, no, I mean, have you painted outside at night? And I was like, no, what do you mean? And so, <laughs> and so we went and it's literally like with watercolors and some watercolor paper outside in the pitch black, looking and then painting. And it's just, that was kind of the beginning of me seeing watercolor as not just, I don't know, English gardens and that kind of thing. Right. That's really not cool. that there's anything wrong with an English garden being painted in watercolor. It's just not for me. <laughs> it's not my practice, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and not something that like, like doing something other than that we might not have considered before going to that residency. Yeah. Have you ever painted outside at night? I have not. I hadn't even considered it, to be honest. I mean, I have um, people that I went to school with that do plein air, um, and I can't even bring myself to do that just because I get really nervous painting in front of people, and like I don't necessarily want someone to come up to me and try to talk to me while I'm painting. So doing it at night might be great because there's no one out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really it's a really kind of interesting exercise in observation because your eyes become very very sensitive to the um quite subtle shifts in shade you know um and that's really cool and then you have to put on like a little head torch to mix your colors so that you can right. you have to remember because you can't have the the what you're seeing you know without light and the ability to mix the color so you have right. to kind of, it yeah it's just it's absolutely fascinating it really is i had so, so much hard. fun with it that's awesome. Sounds really difficult, but fun. Yeah, really no, difficult. Amazing experiment to uh, do landscape. I did it some uh, uh, sometimes in uh, in college. We go out to the sea, to the gardens, and did it landscapes. All the people around us, when they're walking, they stop and watch us. That they are looking very funny when you are when you are drawing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we had to do, we went to the mall with one of my classes and we had to go like find mannequins and people mm -hmm. to draw. And 
it kind of scared me <laughs> off because <laughs> you know someone will just walk up to you and they're like oh what are you drawing are you an artist and I get stage fright a little bit <laughs> yeah that's kind of <laughs> uh on Lanzarote we have like one shopping mall mm -hmm. and that each year they have a they call it a speed painting competition um and this year it's four hours um and sarah in the mall? yeah in the mall in the mall yeah. interesting on a saturday <laughs> <laughs> and like Sarah didn't tell me but signed us both up to take part oh my gosh surprise <laughs> and like and I I am not a painter I, I haven't painted for but it's not about that it's just about having <laughs> some fun so I've taken part this will be, oh, it's only my second year, actually. Um, it normally takes um, place at a time when I'm in the UK working, because um, I still commute back to the UK to work with galleries and museums there. Um, right. And so I've not been able to take part um, every year. But yeah, it's my second year taking part, and it's just really good fun. And this year, there's no theme. You can paint whatever you want. And yeah, you get four hours, and you're kind of, there's a little bit of a restriction, like they give you a minimum and maximum size. But apart from mm. that, it's kind of totally open, you know? So yeah. that's what we're doing with our weekend, having to talk to lots of people about, <laughs> about what it is. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. yeah. I don't know, it's sometimes, it depends what kind of a mood I'm in. Sometimes I'm like, you know, I, I try to be polite, but sometimes I think if I was sat here reading a book or like writing, you know, you wouldn't come up to me and interrupt me. You just let me get on with stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes I feel a bit like I'm being intruded upon, you know? Yep, exactly. That's, yeah. that's why you asked like how the, how the pandemic has affected our practices. Mine has been seriously changed because I went from being in a classroom setting surrounded by people and we're all like commenting on each other's work, watching each other paint over our shoulders, having someone walk around and like give us a critique to being holed up in our houses, you know, doing the best we can with what we have. Um, but I have this great little setup in my dining room. And so it became my whole, you know, main workspace and studio space. And that's been honestly a great little cocoon for me to kind of try new things that I maybe wouldn't try if someone was like looking over my shoulder you know mm. which is how I did the painting that is in the festival um you know I probably wouldn't have painted that if we were just in a classroom okay that's interesting yeah do you think you'll be able to take that forward when well, I suppose now you've graduated, you don't necessarily have to pay in front of people again. No. Nope. Kind of, you know, if you're in that kind of situation again, in like a shared studio space or something like this, do you think that you'll be able to take that kind of freedom or exploratory thing with you? I think so, because I'm a lot more confident in my work than I was at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, again, partly because of the pandemic and being able to just cocoon myself and figure out what I'm trying to do. Um, which is always the hardest part, I think, with, for being an artist, at least for me, was like, what's my point, my purpose as an artist? What's the point for me? Um, so, yeah, I think I'll be a lot more comfortable if I was in a shared studio space now. And I do miss the interaction of, um, you know, bouncing ideas off of people and having, you know, their input um, when I seek it. <laughs> <laughs> or even if I'm not, if, even if I don't seek it and they have like a great idea, like I kind of miss that aspect. Um, but it's, it has been really nice. Just having like a quiet space. I don't have to commute an hour to get to my studio. You know, I don't even have to get dressed. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it a lot easier to want to paint too. True. And I'm a lot more comfortable with Zoom because of that, because all of my classes were conducted over Zoom. Was it the same for you, Marva? What? 
Was it the same for you? Did you have to have classes over over Zoom? No, no, I uh, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> I love to I give courses, but not in the Zoom. I just on life like I, I give the courses to the kids in, in now in my home or in my studio uh, in front of me, not uh, through internet. Uh -huh. I thought art must be, uh, you know, take courses face to face, you know, just interact with the people. Mm -hmm. It's definitely um, got a kind of magical quality when you can be face to face. Definitely. Yeah. I have started teaching my student face to face again. We were doing Zoom for a little bit, but it's always so hard to keep someone engaged on Zoom, um, yeah. especially when they're 10 years yeah. old. You yeah. know, it's not very interesting <laughs> for them. <laughs> so that was a challenge, but um, they recently moved to a place with a garage, which is fantastic. Um, so we can be down in there. And, you know, now because of the, like, I am vaccinated, thankfully. Um, but she can't be because she's only 12. So uh, with the Delta variant and everything, we're still wearing masks and everything, um, but we're able to still meet in person, which has been good. We almost ended up having to do Zoom for the, our last session, but she was so upset at the idea <laughs> that we decided <laughs> to just wear masks instead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? Because it's kind of, balancing off what you feel comfortable with what's safe for everybody and what you what you need for your kind of mental health and for your physical health as well you know as a person um yeah. all of that stuff absolutely okay. yeah it's been really tough but we all we all figured it out and got through it thankfully i love watching people work you know it's one of the things that I really like about teaching. So I'm probably spending more time watching the three of you than I am <laughs> on my own piece. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I just think you can learn so much from watching other people. Mm -hmm. That's true. I love just watching speed paintings even, or just reels on Instagram, you know? Yeah. I'm a new convert to reels. At first I was like, oh, they're just trying to make it like TikTok. And I'm not young enough for that. <laughs> I, you know, but now I'm, I'm totally on board. I'm totally on board with it. Yeah. I, I haven't tried know. making one yet, but they're fun to watch. I accidentally posted my first one yesterday. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I posted them. Um, I've just got a new drone to to video my my beach art, my land artworks. Oh, you do land art? That's really cool. Yeah, that that's kind of my my main my main art form. Um, and yeah, so I, I I had a video and I went to post it just as like just as a video, mm -hmm. and uh, and it just popped up and said your reel has been posted. What? Like, what? What? <laughs> Congrats, you're famous now. <laughs> I'm surprised. Like a lot more people seem to seem to hit it than than like posts that have just gone kind of normally. You know, I think it's because they have that whole separate tab just for reels, and you can just keep scrolling and scrolling endlessly. Yeah. And like, you'll see something that has 10,000 views. You'll see something that has zero views um, and they just mix it up, which is pretty cool. I've added more here if you'd like to see. Again, I don't think the color is gonna really come through with this camera, but, and it's really wet. So excuse the glare. <laughs> yeah, wow, wow. That's amazing. Coming through. The eyes are a little wonky, but Whatever, we're not gonna look at that. Don't look at that. How's yours, Marwa? Yeah, that's. Oh wow, that's so cool. Oh, nice. Thank you. 
I love the differences between your two pieces. You know, like yours is kind of the different materials, the the color versus the black and white. Cool. Let's let's show ours as well, so you can go first. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the spirit of sharing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of got nice. overexcited. So I have the like premise, right? <laughs> but it's, it's like... <laughs> I, Sarah's just like, Sarah's just a, a vibrance of colour. Like, oh. in the, <laughs> this sounds really cheesy. But in just like in the way that she dresses and like and obviously her hair, but also like she's just so freaking bubbly all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but um I love that. Yeah. I'm blushing. Oh shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I've just been drawing, but I've just been kind of drawing using using random colours. Because you're a colorful really person. That's so cute. I love that. I think mine mine's finished. So I did the watercolor first, and then this pen work over the eyes, so she doesn't have eyes. She also doesn't have any ears, <laughs> and she also doesn't have a mouth. And if I just zoom, <laughs> manual zooming here. Is not she just on mute? Not just wow. on mute. Nice. So what does that mean? Well, so today I attended um, uh, an online meeting about Leeds 2023 and there were some really mm. interesting creative workshops um, that were held as part of the, the meeting and it was really thinking about how you can, um, as a city, kind of give voice to lots of different artists and creatives and practitioners who all live there and are from really widely different backgrounds, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And we were asked to do some, some activities to, to kind of get our thinking going. And one of the things was we had to draw a billboard, a blank billboard in the middle of like some city or some wasteland. And then we had to come up with a, a message that we wanted the capital of culture to kind of give the city. Um, and my message was together is better because I'm all about people working together for the, for the greater good. Um, but there was like a real sense of, of frustration and upset and anger actually uh, um, from coming from a lot of people um, who are in this meeting because they're not they're not being represented, you know, in any way, shape, or form, and they're paying for for galleries and museums and other public um, establishments with their taxpayers' money, the same as anybody else, and yet there's nothing that kind of reflects their experience, their lived realities. Um, Interesting. And lots of the billboards were like, I am here and um, silent no more. And like really kind of strong statements about people, you know, wanting to be heard and wanting to um, allow others to be heard as well. And um, there was a lot of discussion around perhaps the, the current establishment not seeing and not hearing and um, not listening, not kind of engaging in responses. And so it was kind of playing with that because it's the thing that everyone says in, in Zoom meetings, isn't it? Like, oh, you're, you're on mute, you're still on mute, we can see your video, but you're still on mute. So it was mm -hmm. just kind of playing with, yeah, that idea of the different ways that you can listen and respond or not, as the case may be. Sorry, that was really a rambling kind of explanation, wasn't it? Sorry. No, that made a lot of sense, though. Yeah. You know, like, like you're not just being, you're not just on mute, you're being silenced by the people who aren't representing you, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And Leeds, Leeds in the UK is, is 
I guess kind of representative of, of a lot of metropolitan cities is where it's it's a huge it's a huge cauldron of of different ethnicities, races, genders, like every aspect of society is reflected in the city, but is segregated and not not kind of quite often through choice. Yeah. Like kind of protection. Um, like between the like wealthier classes or? Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it's because I've never been to the UK, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, I think kind of it's it's really hard because people people aren't represented in that city, and and Sarah and I have experienced have experienced it quite a lot because we we used to work. Um, with the West West Indian community there, and uh, and we experienced kind of the the huge segregations, just the huge struggles. I mean, the West Indian community have got a really vibrant culture and um, community, and really intensely enjoy art in its widest sense you know like cooking talking storytelling like dancing making costumes music like it's it's a really rich heritage and yet it's one that's kind of overlooked and has been overlooked for a really long time by other ethnicities in the city you know it's it's just the kind of dominant white middle upper class thing that is replicated all over the UK um yeah it's just UK. well no I don't <laughs> even think it's just the UK but I'm speaking from my experience yeah. when we speak about the UK and it's um yeah working alongside um people it was really it was really kind of humbling and really eye-opening as well you know they they were the experts they were the people who had all of the skills and all of the knowledge and we were invited into a troupe first to dance as part of the parade and then um, as makers um, and yeah just kind of seeing things through their eyes was yeah it's really kind of changed a lot of things for me. That's kind of beautiful. Yeah, it was it being welcomed and being just being. Accepted. You lived with Indians in in UK. You lived with because I traveled to India for, for five months. I guess I said five months there. I lived okay. with Indians. I know. I know how they are. They're amazing people. Yeah, we we actually yeah. lived. We used to live um, just outside of Leeds in a city called Bradford. Um, mm. which had, what, what percentage was it? 27. Yeah, 27% of, um, of the community was... Either Indian or Pakistani. Yeah. Oh, wow. uh, I lived in India in a town locked, uh, called Lucknow there. They are amazing. Uh, they are totally talented in painting. I love their... Uh, I traveled to continue my master's there, but I got sick from the weather, so I didn't continue. But I have some friends, a lot of friends, Indian. They are very good people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. We we went and spent we were there six weeks, eight, eight weeks. weeks. Yeah. We did um, yoga teacher training in in Kerala. Oh wow, oh. that must have been amazing. Yeah, it was. It was insane. I was gonna say amazing was one word. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, yeah, it was it was eight weeks. Um, 
but the the training, the teacher training that we did was for six weeks. Um, and it was quite a lot of time. Yeah, and you, we were doing yoga from I can't remember how long it was. It was. Four oh, o'clock in the so morning. early in the morning. It was like three, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. Four, yeah, come on. Four. Four, we oh, got up four. and had tea. Four. And then we had class at 4 30, I think. Yeah. Oof, that sounds tough. Yeah. And then, and then you <laughs> so went. So it was like a boot camp. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then we went, we, like, we went through all the way till I think the last, last class was eight o'clock at night. No, that's when we went to bed. It was <laughs> the last class was. <laughs> like maybe six and then we ate and then I say we went to bed I literally ate and went to bed some people did stay up after that didn't they but but yeah, yeah. It, really it was it was intense wasn't it super intense <laughs> but the the people that we encountered there were like the most the most friendly and the most giving yeah they are so friendly there yeah like we we got a train um, across country, and it was like twelve hours on the train. Um, and we we travelled in just like the standard class on the train, and the carriage was absolutely you couldn't move. There was there was so many people in the train. It was it was just unbelievable. <laughs> and and the family that we sat next to were like just so friendly throughout the whole journey and they had there was four of them there was four of them in the family and they had four bananas for this 12 hour train journey oh my gosh and they they wouldn't they wouldn't eat them all they want they wanted to share them with us oh wow wow and we played a game with them. What were we playing we with played them? We played the drawing game where you call. Oh, yeah. You know the um, surrealist drawing game? Where you oh, like where you draw a head and they draw the body. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, we <laughs> played that, that with them. It was awesome. That's such a fun game. Oh, I love yeah. that so much. <laughs> <laughs> such a wonderful place. I, I can't wait to go back. Every, everywhere we went was just, especially, especially as an artist, it was, it was just breathtaking. Like, yeah. Absolutely everything you saw was just colour and know. vibrance. And... It's a full on assault on the senses, isn't it? Yeah. That's why I love it. Um, and it's also why sometimes I have to lie in like a dark, quiet room for a little bit whilst I'm there. Because it's like, it's so much to take in, you know? It's so much. It's just like yeah. a little overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I totally get that. I, I haven't been to India, unfortunately. The closest I've been uh, was Italy. And even Italy was exhausting like that. And I, I would get back to where we were staying and I would just need like, silence <laughs> to just process <laughs> everything whereabouts did you go in italy amber we went all over we went to florence rome siena umbria um, orvieto uh Banio reggio which was amazing it's this city it's an ancient city or not ancient but you know compared to the u.s <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and i guess they're there was so much erosion that it became like a little island. So it's this big, tall, circular cliff with this city on top. And then there's this long bridge that you have to take to walk out to it. People still live there. Wow. wow. And it's, it's crazy. It's so pretty. And it looks like something out of a movie, like most of Europe does. But <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty awesome. That was definitely one of the more memorable trips that we took was to that little area. Like Florence was amazing, obviously, and Rome is also. Um, we did go to the Vatican like in the middle of summer, and that was like I saw some really amazing art. It was also the most exhausting day because the Vatican in the summer is incredibly crowded. Like I was yeah. not prepared for how many people were there. <laughs> 
And they kind of like ushered you through a bit, don't they? Yeah, and we had a tour guide who was doing an amazing job, but we were rushed through the whole thing. Um, so I, I don't know if I would want that same experience again. Um, but it was amazing, you know, seeing original pieces um, like by Michelangelo in person. That was crazy. Um, it was still worth it. It was just really uh -huh. overwhelming. I'm gonna hair dry again, so I'm gonna mute. <laughs> <laughs> Where would you really like to um, visit Mawa? Uh, Turkey. I want to travel to Turkey. I, I love it. The art there is amazing. The Islamic uh, art. I want to watch it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, actually, I tried uh, now to. Uh, at, uh, try to send my uh, research plan to accept it in some, uh, some some colleges. I want to continue my master there and to be a professor in the college. Uh, I hope that and live there. Wow. Continue my life there. I want that. That sounds like a cool plan. Yeah. <laughs> I've never visited Turkey, but I'd love to go. Oh. Actually, I love wow. traveling so much. I love traveling so much, but I don't have enough money. <laughs> <laughs> I always feel like that. I feel like there's never enough money to do the amount of traveling I want to do. Oh. Me too. <laughs> That's why I would like to live in Europe, because it seems a lot easier to get around than coming all the way across the Atlantic. <laughs> Well, it's a lot easier to get around in Europe, but it's not a lot easier to go and see, you know, like like you guys over there in the States and Canada and South America. and That's true. And you've got, you've got such a vast expanse of, of territory that you can travel. Yeah, that's without, very true. You know, about having without a passport. actually crossing a border, yeah. Yeah, that that is very true. I guess we always, the grass is always greener, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's so true. Hmm. Oh, wow. I can't believe we've been working for an hour and a half now. No. Wow. It feels like wow. it's gone really, really wow. fast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow, it's already 1.30 mm -hmm. in my time. <laughs> <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, I haven't fun too. I'm absolutely glued to the screen watching you two work. I'm glad we can entertain you. <laughs> That's what I was hoping was that that this would work out that way. <laughs> I was pretty nervous about doing this actually, like live streaming. I've actually never done it before. And um, like I said, I kind of get stage fright, but it's a lot easier, of course, doing it virtually because you're just talking to a camera. But, uh, but you're not coming across as nervous at all, you know? You're coming across very natural, both <laughs> of you. You're like pro. Thank you. <laughs> I have a great poker face then. <laughs> <laughs> I did some practice but yesterday in front of the camera. I sent to, to her that yeah. the videos to show me. <laughs> <laughs> and even then you felt natural. Mm. 
it helps having you guys as an audience you're easy to talk to and like have something to say yeah. while we're working oh thanks you're very yeah. easy to talk to as well it's like this is really it's this like is really natural yeah. it makes me think that maybe there's something in it you know in what yeah in in what mo was saying about having like this kind of it is a bit like a kind of cafe vibe you know we're all here we're all just doing our own thing yeah and we're all chatting about things that are kind of important or not you know but we're just kind of, it just feels like really comfortable and i kind of feel quite in a flow state quite easily yeah me too i wasn't expecting this painting to go this well too and it feels like it's just kind of it's just working which is always nice yeah. maybe there's like a, a future for I don't know what we call it, the digital art cafe or something. Yeah. 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 You could even have someone who does for, like digital art, like sharing their screen, <laughs> if you wanted something <laughs> a little bit easier to watch. Instead of me being like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> It's interesting. We've had we've had quite a few, quite a few really exciting digital artists this year. Um, so some of the pieces that we've had two virtual reality pieces. Oh, that's really cool. Which have been like they su they submitted the pieces, and then when we found out we could have the the physical exhibition space, um, they both got in touch and said okay, we can send you like the link so that you can have like these pieces in the gallery space where you are. That's really cool. And so like, it's just been awesome, hasn't it? It has. And don't forget the Sansar gallery that Brittany did. Yeah, Brittany did um, a Sansar gallery, which is like a, an, I don't know whether either of you have been around it. It's like a virtual reality gallery space. And obviously the galleries that we've done have been kind of traditional, very traditional. Um, but the, the gallery that Brittany's done has been absolutely awesome, hasn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely insane. It's totally surreal. And it's totally, it's like, it's like the future of art galleries or something. It's, it's like something that's not even of this planet or of this time. It's honestly so incredible and just so look at unique. It. Um, yeah, I really Is it part of the it. festival? I didn't see it. Yeah, she she did um, a gallery on the Sansar platform and you could access it for four dates. The last day has gone. I was going to say, it's only just oh. gone as well. Yeah, so. I don't know. Oh, she, I'm sure that we could ask for a little video of the platform before she takes it down. Maybe we could share that cool. on YouTube. Because I'm sure that there will be people who've not been able to actually go and see it. Um, but yeah, it's just, and it's kind of like, it's also social as well as a gallery space. So if you're there, you're like there as like a little kind of shadow character. Like an avatar. Like an avatar. Yeah, oh, that's, cool. that's the proper word. And then if there are other people in the space at the same time as you, you can talk in real time about the artwork. That's awesome. It's just, it blows my mind. I still have no idea how she's done it. I just think she's so talented. There was, I went to the, um, somewhat related, I went to the uh, Van Gogh, or not Van Gogh, I'm sorry, um, Dali Museum in St. Pete, Florida, and they have a virtual reality thing where you enter a Dali painting virtually, and they give you like a headset, and there's a seat, and you have like little controls, and you can move to different points within this like three-dimensional space created based off of a Salvador Dali painting. It's really trippy. <laughs> it's super <laughs> cool. I loved it. Yeah, it was great. Uh, the museum is really cool if you guys ever go to Florida. Say that again, sorry? The Dali Museum in Florida and St. Pete is incredible if you guys ever go. Oh, okay. Would recommend. I quite want to go to Florida after watching that documentary. We watched a travel documentary. 
and it's never really been on my hit list but after watching right. that they traveled through and I was like okay all right so oh really mm-hmm. yeah there was like I grew up in Florida there was a part of it that had like I think it must have been kind of really southern Florida it seems to have quite a Cuban influence yeah yeah the keys like the keys are like super Cuban the whole state is super Cuban. Yeah. It's, See, so I nice. really miss that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I miss I mean, Cuban I, sandwiches and Cuban coffee. I've been a few times. Um, once to do the, the terrible tourist visit every park that there is trip <laughs> <laughs> that I was taken on when I was at when I was a teenager with my parents. Um, mm-hmm. But then I've, I've been a couple of times over to Naples. Um, Isn't that in Italy? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and travel, traveled, over to, traveled over to Miami for a bit and then down the Keys. We went all the way down to like, what's the very, is it Key West? Yeah. The very last one. That's cool. I've actually never been there. Like that that journey in itself was was one of the most memorable memorable. Just like traveling all the way down oh. through those that stretch of islands. On the bridge, yeah. Yeah. It's like what a over a mile long bridge. Because I'm pretty sure there's there's one of them that's like seven miles long. Yeah, I think that's I think that's the one. It's it's just like just insane. Wow. Yeah. But it's so well, beautiful. Went, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot better as as a visitor. Um, having grown up there, wouldn't recommend living there necessarily. Personally, just because it's so hot, I don't like yeah. I don't like the heat. <laughs> how how hot does it get, Amber? You know, it doesn't really, the temperature generally doesn't get above, like, 90, but the humidity is what kills you, literally, sometimes. Because, like, you can't actually physically sweat because it's, the the air around you is already so saturated that, like, you can't really sweat to cool off, and so everything feels that much harder, hotter. Mm. But if you go as a tourist, you're, like, kind of prepared for that, then it's fine. And I'm pretty sure that air conditioning is like legally required in all housing. <laughs> yeah. When I went, um, I went most recently to visit because my mom still lives there. And I took my boyfriend with me and we went to um, some springs and did some things that I never really got to do as a, as a kid living there. And it gave me a new appreciation for it for sure. The, the springs out there are incredible. Like the most clear blue water and like it's freezing cold so when it's really hot and you're kayaking down this river like you can stick your feet in the water and it's like ice water it's super refreshing and it was pretty magical I won't lie Hmm. and that's where you were you were born Amber no actually I was born in Colorado uh into a military family so we moved around a lot um when I was younger and then uh Ended up settling down with just me and my mom in Florida, and then um, I graduated from high school and moved to California. So that's my life story. <laughs> <laughs> and were you born in Alexandria, Mala? Uh, I'm born in Egypt. In Egypt, <laughs> just traveled to India for four, five uh, months and returned. That's it. I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> But you were born in the in the town you're in now, in Alexandria, or somewhere else? Uh, no, I didn't go any, anywhere else. I just sit in Alexandria. I just visit some uh, other towns in Egypt called Gloucester and Aswan. Yeah, that's it. Uh, temples of the Pharaonic. Uh, I, I, I saw the temples of the Pharaonic. It was amazing and did a workshop there in the Fine Art College. Uh, that's it. That was happening. That's a trip in, for, in the college. Yeah. 
Is it Aswan that has the um, huge dam? Huge. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Aswan has huge dam. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, Amber, uh, yeah. I'm done. I am done. You're done. I'm almost done. I'm right there. Let me just get this shot out in really quick. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was normally me, Mawa. <laughs> quick recovery. Nobody will have known. That. Yeah. <laughs> we can just edit that out. <laughs> I've always wanted to go to Egypt, and I swear I will one day. I've always been super obsessed with art history, and obviously, the art history in Egypt is incredibly rich. Yeah. Yes. One day, one day I will be there. Okay, we'll wait for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. I'm done too. Let's see. What do we got? This is. I'm gonna try and show you on my laptop because I don't think it's gonna show you very well. It's a little bit better. Oh, now we can see the color. Oh, wow. Yeah. A little bit at least. Wow. It was really washed yeah. out on that other camera. That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it looks so different. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's funny how that works. Uh, it's so awesome. Can you bring that close, Amala? Uh, Wish I knew how to work like that. That's awesome. Thank you. I love how the shapes are kind of replicated in the in the background and in the face. It gives it this really nice kind of um, rhythm. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, I love that. What's your What's your message with your piece? Message. Uh, like what inspired you to do that design, or was it just you were just flowing? Oh. I just uh, uh, inspired me. I watch a lot of painting of uh, cubism and uh, and abstract. I told you. That was uninspired. Yeah, uh, just drop it what I have in my mind and my feeling. That's it. It's great. But I, I love Picasso. Yeah, uh, the the cube, how they how he cubes the faces. It was amazing. Uh, I took a lot of ports and paintings. I tried to copy it actually. Oh, that's it. Nice. I've tried doing cubism. It's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> My brain doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah. What was your message, Amber? Um, I was I picked a picture that I think was kind of had a hopeful vibe to it. You know, we're all trying to come out of this pandemic, and so um, I was just trying to go for something where, like, he's in kind of a cooler background, and then his skin tones are all really warm, and he's like looking up towards the future getting out of this mess. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a lovely message. Yeah. And what a lovely yeah. bit, a bit point even to end on, um, ending on hope for the future. I like that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I just thought of that. Thank you both so much for giving your time and energy to the festival program of events by donating this workshop. Um, we've really enjoyed talking with you and doing the, the workshop with you. And I can't wait to share it on the YouTube channel. Yeah. I think that um, people are gonna really enjoy this. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thank this you. was really fun.